American icon Maya Angelou once said, if you don't know where you've come from, you don't know where you're going. I'm going to take a few minutes to walk you through where we've come from and give you context for where we must go together. When we all can get on one page, our city will literally be unstoppable. For decades, federal redlining policies listed racially diverse areas like Compton as hazardous investment zones, providing banks with a public and legal justification for steering capital investment away from communities like ours. These classifications were used not only for businesses making investment decisions, but also by the Federal Housing Administration to determine who was worthy of home loans. Cut off from access to affordable mortgages, many black and brown families were unable to build generational wealth through home ownership. Families broke barriers and moved up and into Compton, which in the 1960s and 70s thrived. In the 1980s and 90s, the proliferation of crack cocaine, gangs, and violence ravaged our city, decimated our tax base, while our infrastructure and public assets, parks, neighborhoods, and small businesses continued to decline. In 2000, crime continued to spike, and the mayor and council disbanded Compton PD, bringing in the sheriff's department to stabilize safety in the city. When the city lost control of public safety, it gained additional resources to combat crime. The then self-declared gangster mayor and public corruption took a continued toll on our city's reputation and stifled significant reinvestment. Due to the city's poor financial condition, subsequent administrations continued to lack infrastructure improvements and basic maintenance and kicking those improvements down the road. In 2011, city council overspending came to a head while playgrounds were decaying, roads were crumbling and the city faced bankruptcy. A newly accumulated $43 million deficit resulted in a 50% reduction of the city's workforce and the remaining employees worked on furloughs. The city then lost its credit rating, was in poor standing with HUD, owed $5 million in mismanaged funds, and due to the revolving door at the city's top administrative post, had created a toxic environment for employees. There was a lack of accountability, stable oversight and productivity, the historic battle for political power on the city council and voting blocks resulted in city councils which have fired city managers almost every year for the past 20 years in an attempt to control the city. In other words, this is equivalent to a company firing its CEO or COO every year. Who suffered from this? The residents who paid high taxes from a government that cared more about political power than the people. In 2013, when I was elected mayor, the city was on the brink of destruction. The city's newly accumulated $43 million deficit, reduced workforce, failure to plan for infrastructure upgrades, lack of funding to pay for street and park improvements, coupled with decades of neglect and cyclical unstable management, our outlook was dim to say the least. To top it off, the state community redevelopment agency had been dissolved, leading to a state pension fund grab. The city was unable to contribute its required contribution to CalPERS. This was only fixed when we lobbied for a new law in 2015 to restore over $20 million in pension funds. Unfortunately, being elected mayor didn't give me a magic wand to print money for street and park improvements, to fight crime, or to transform City Hall. The truth is, hard-won battles against those that didn't want progress resulted in a tumultuous tenure. But I'm happy to say, with your support, we prevailed. On July 1 of that year, I was entrusted to deliver a 12-point Vision for Compton strategy that we created together. Before I ever sought your support, I sought your input through stakeholder listening sessions to hear directly from you on your priorities to identify real deliverables designed to change outcomes, truly impacting our quality of life as residents, businesses, stakeholders. We the people now and in the future years to come. I won't take you on a full walk through the last eight years, but here's a few highlights of our journey together. In 2013, we got straight to work on our roads, approving essential studies required to unlock grants, restricted funds, and resurfaced 88 residential streets with Capital Improvement Program 1401. We restored laid off employees and eliminated furloughs. We successfully attracted landmark economic development to our city, securing nearly 2 million square feet in new development. We built a 35,000 square foot state-of-the-art community center and public parking facility, enabling our city to assemble and thrive. We implemented the city's first local hiring, procurement, and community benefits policy, empowering us to secure $10 million in community benefits and exceed our 35% local hire mandate. 
In 2015, the governor signed a law restoring $9 million and $3.2 million annually to our city as a result of our efforts. We introduced Measure P to address decades of neglect, restore infrastructure, stabilize city services, and public safety. We attracted $9 million in new grant funding for street reconstruction. We recently approved the Compton at Work $45 million landmark street reconstruction program, the largest infrastructure investment in our city's history. We also partnered with the Compton Community Development Corporation, the Fund for Guaranteed Income, and Jane Family Institute to launch the Compton Pledge, an $8 million guaranteed income pilot delivering direct cash payments to Compton residents for two years, representing the largest guaranteed income pilot in our nation's history. We continue focusing on delivering street reconstruction for our residents and completing the following. Let's discuss a few details related to our city's largest assets, streets, parks, lighting, public facilities, and equipment. Over the last eight years, we worked diligently to secure additional revenue, new grants, fund essential pavement management studies, architectural and engineering designs of roads, and purchase critical equipment to invest in our city's street system. We invested the following grants, Capital Improvement Program 1301, 1801, Rhine and Overlay, Pothole Repairs, asphalt and equipment purchases for in-house street repairs, new street signs and wayfinders. Measure P is our city's local tax initiative. Prior to Measure P, the city had zero funding dedicated to public improvements and was unable to afford matching funding essential for grants. Post Measure P, the city was able to invest in critical safety infrastructure improvements, equipment, and was able for the first time in many years to appropriate matching funds that unlocked our ability to access additional funding for projects. We've made significant improvements with existing revenue and we're introducing a package to do more faster. I am also pleased to report that we are introducing an additional strategy to complete nearly $100 million in comprehensive citywide improvements as promised. We have a, an aggressive funding strategy to support infrastructure at a scale that is at a first in our city's history. I'm proud to have led this work. Through the Compton at Work Infrastructure Program, we approved a $45 million infrastructure bond by combining transportation revenues, including Measure M, R, Prop C, et cetera. This was approved in December 2020 and will be spent by 2023. The second phase is a $54 million Measure P funded Compton at Work Infrastructure Investment Program, which will be approved in March of this year and is mandated to be spent by 2023. We also just completed Capital Improvement Program 1801, which represents a $6.3 million investment in our street system. Promises made, promises kept. I'll walk through a few park improvement projects as well. We renovated Track New Park in 2019, which was last refurbished in 1997. We partnered with Kaboom to replace 30-year-old equipment in Gonzales Park and have replaced equipment in Burrell McDonald Park as well. We partnered with the Dodgers Foundation to renovate the Jackie Robinson Stadium. We partnered with the Williams Sister Family Foundation for a new tennis court. We made over $400,000 worth of improvements in South Park, which includes a new playground, outdoor exercise area, decomposed granite walking trails, picnic stations, and renovated sports facilities that were paid for by Measure P. We launched a pilot with Edison to upgrade 60% of the city's street lights to be brighter and more energy efficient. The financing plan for our $2 million strategy will also be published soon. And we have a funding plan to upgrade all public facilities because let's face it, you deserve it. We also installed new equipment and vehicle investments through public works, fire, and parking. Our city now has new internal software, a new mobile app, and also a new website. We're pleased to partner with Plenty Farms to deliver a new high-tech indoor vertical farm in our great city. This farm will be the largest of its kind in Southern California, spanning nearly 100,000 square feet. Set to supply over 400 grocery stores throughout our state with organic greens and strawberries while paying homage to Compton's rich agricultural roots. Plenty is an indoor agriculture company. We're taking a crack at a totally new way of producing food to feed the world. Plenty's mission is plants, people, and planet. We produce the best quality plants that we can. We give those to the people and we help diminish the damage that we're doing to the planet. 
From the minute I walked in on my first day, less than an hour, I knew this was a place that I would want to work at. You know, you walk around, you see smiling faces, positive vibes. I believe in, you know, that positivity is contagious. People tell us, you know, I'm eating kale as a snack now. We're not just consistently growing plants, we're consistently delivering that flavor. Growing things indoors, it doesn't seem like that. It doesn't appeal to our romantic notions around agriculture as a sustainable practice, but in reality, our farms are incredibly efficient. This could be something that is ensuring the survival, the health, the well-being of our children and our, our children's children. Compton's upward trajectory relies on political stability and a stable city management team. I'm honored to introduce our city manager, Craig Cornwell. He's our former city attorney of 12 years, a proud longtime Compton resident and taxpayer, and he has served in the city management role for the last 18 months. The city's progress wouldn't be possible without his leadership, hard work, and unmatched dedication. Let me start by saying to our beautiful Compton residents, to our Honorable Mayor Asia Brown and the entire city council. It has been my honor to be the city manager uh, for approximately the last year and a half. And thank you for this opportunity to chat with all of you. I often get the question of what it's like uh, when I started as city manager. The first thing I did was take a deep breath and count to 10. Then I had to get to work. I started with the organization. Uh, I wanted to be the hardest working employee in City Hall. And then I wanted to promote employees that were working just as hard. Uh, and also those that were also residents of Compton. I thought I needed uh, employees that had a, a stake in the city and really wanted to see it improve. We were able to fill 14 promotional opportunities with residents from the city. Then I turned to the quality of life issues. Of course, the main issue was our streets. Uh, and for the first time that I can remember, I've been at the city about 21 years, we had a singular focus from the residents to the council, to my office, to fix our infrastructure. And with that singular focus, we were able to do approximately 50 plus streets in a year and a half. And then that wasn't the only issue. We had uh, homeless, challenges, uh, which is a state crisis. We had uh, illegal dumping that was taking our city away aesthetically and health-wise. And then we had uh, graffiti challenges that we had to address. And now going into this year, the challenges didn't stop, of course, we are in the middle of a pandemic that has caused a deficit of uh, approximately $5 million. And we had to start the fiscal year off with a workforce reduction. But there's been good news too. Uh, City Council has approved a street financing plan of bringing approximately $45 million to continue our street reconstruction program. And I'm here to tell you Compton is trending up. Now, why do I say Compton is trending up? Well, let's take development, for instance. We're in negotiation regarding bringing over 600 units of housing to the city, along with over 80,000 square feet of commercial space. That is significant uh, investment in the city, and that's going to only strengthen our tax base. One of the things we're working on is streamlining the services we offer at City Hall. So whether you're a homeowner or the owner of a 
shopping plaza. Um, you want to be able to conduct your business efficiently, uh, whether you're dealing with business license, building and safety, planning, uh, our public works, engineering department, or licensing. Uh, we're looking at ways to make that much more efficient um, and even providing online, online services so that you can do business with the city no matter where you are. Another aspect of strengthening City Hall is getting our financial house in order. For several years, the world has not heard about our financial condition. And the way we speak to the world is through filing audit reports. And from fiscal year 2019 moving forward, we are filing those reports. We are going through looking at the historical accounting of the city. All that works towards a stronger organization and ultimately a stronger Compton. So as I close my portion of this address, I just want to leave with you that you have an organization that is working hard and working for you. I am privileged and honored to be the city manager. And I look forward to meeting every challenge and opportunity for Compton. Thank you. Hi, it's great to be with all of you today. Before I go ahead and describe the ongoing activities in the city controller's apartment, I would like to provide you with a snapshot of past unfavorable financial positions that the city has encountered, the strides taken to overcome past poor performance, and our ongoing recovery plan currently on schedule to be completed by June 30th, 2021. All to establish a firm financial foundation for Compton's future. Unfortunately, the city had encountered years of unsustainable overspending by prior administrations and a $42 million deficit that originated from the general fund in fiscal year 2011. For the last 30 years, historic mismanagement and instability has hampered city operations. Audits have identified that A, proper financial policies and existing internal controls were insufficient, that B, more staff oversight and training were needed, and C, that certain city assets needed to be re-evaluated. Even though audit findings have brought these unfavorable prior actions to light and have illuminated the need for changes in the city controller's apartment as well as citywide, these things are definitely manageable. They are not impossible to get out of. Thankfully, the city's leadership committed to a financial recovery plan and invested in building the city controller's department with proper personnel to ensure we have the tools, time, and energy to work on these problems and make changes for a better future. Just like any other area where we want to succeed, we need to have a recovery plan. A recovery plan for overcoming these unfavorable financial challenges includes A, understanding the full cost of providing all city services through a citywide indirect cost allocation plan, and B, to implement new financial policies with continuous training and evaluation of the results of that implementation. These will increase the efficiency and effectiveness of city operations. We are also on schedule to implement these policies by June 30th, 2021. We're also launching a new fraud hotline service so that tipsters can call into the hotline anonymously to report potential wrongdoings that would be subject to an investigation. Lastly, in order to bring us back to where we were before the past events and past mismanagement occurred in prior administrations, we also need to go back and research past accounting records so that we can establish a firm financial foundation based on reliable and confirmed data. We are reviewing 20 years of past city accounting transactions 
in order to make the appropriate corrections. This includes a citywide fixed asset valuation, which is also expected to be completed by June 30th, 2021. As we've undoubtedly made significant strides in correcting past issues, I'd also like to share the proactive strategies that have resulted in a positive impact in the city controller's department. Daily staff training in financial accounting, reporting, and internal controls, coupled with our corrective action plan implementation progress, are paving the way to avoid future audit findings. Additionally, we have completed the fiscal year 2019 State Controller's City's Financial Transactions Report and Compensation Report, an audit from the Office of the Inspector General, an MTA audit, the fiscal year 2020 Street Expenditures Report for the State Controller's Office, and we have provided cost forecasting for labor negotiations as well. Further, we have drafted over eight new financial policies for implementation throughout all city departments and operations. We are confident in our plans and actions, and we are confident that we can put the city in a favorable financial position for years to come. Thank you so much for all of your time and attention. My name is Damon Brown, and it is my honor to serve as your city attorney. When I assumed the role 18 months ago, I set certain goals for my office aimed to improve the delivery of services to the community and aggressively defend the interests of the city and its residents. I began by identifying priorities for future action with respect to ordinances and policies that could have measurable outcomes. I am proud of the work that my team and I were able to do to safeguard the city and to advance progress. Here are just a few highlights of what we were able to accomplish within the last 18 months. In concert with the mayor and council, I have been fighting for justice on behalf of those whose civil rights have been abused by law enforcement. I am committed to advocating for the dignity and security of residents against all threats. I have and will always work with community leaders and law enforcement to improve resident safety and will continue to fight to make long overdue contractual changes to the sheriff's contract to overcome the status quo. With the approval of council, we established the Law Enforcement Review Board to work in partnership with the community and hold law enforcement accountable for violations of the civil rights of our residents. I updated my office's technology to provide efficient service, finalized long overdue updates to the city's personnel rules for the first time in 30 years, and conducted audits to reduce overhead, labor, and overtime costs. I had the privilege of serving as legal advisor to the city's Charter Review Committee, a dynamic group of dedicated residents who work diligently to propose desired changes to our city's governing document. I propose the initiation of litigation to combat discrimination in the availability of financial resources in the city and updated city policies and our building code to bring them into alignment with changes in the law, including our conflict of interest code to promote transparency and accountability. We strengthened restrictions in our fireworks ordinance, created study sessions to increase community engagement and transparency, and to empower our elected leaders to make informed decisions. And we drafted the city's flavored tobacco ban, protecting our children from predatory practices by the tobacco industry. I've been working with the controller's office on matters related to the state audit by conducting an assessment on proposed new fiscal policies and with the assistance of the fantastic attorneys and staff in my office, we have cleaned and cleared significant liability off the books and improved response time to liability claims. We tackled the long-standing demise of two city cemeteries, historic landmarks that serve as the final resting place for so many of our loved ones. 
I have continued collaboration with Assemblymember Mike Gibson's office and the State Cemetery and Funeral Bureau to advocate for legislative changes necessary to remedy issues that plague unlicensed cemeteries generally and to work with community partners to address the immediate needs of Woodlawn and Angeles Abbey cemeteries. It has been quite a year. And moving forward, I have set the following priorities for my office to tackle over the course of this and the next fiscal year. This year, you'll see ordinances regarding permit parking, prohibitions on oversized vehicles on residential streets, and enforcement of the 72-hour parking restrictions. I am also completing negotiations of the city's first project labor agreement to secure local employment and apprenticeship for Compton residents on publicly funded projects. We're also combating blight by conducting public hearings to declare property owners of illegal businesses and unpermitted structures as public nuisances, which can result in the revocation of licenses and the issuance of significant fines. We have had success working with law enforcement to close illegal marijuana dispensaries and prosecute those who support their operations. We are working diligently to expand opportunities for criminal prosecution, strengthen civil enforcement, and initiate cost recovery for taxpayer funds expended to combat illegal dispensaries. I have also commissioned a full assessment of the city's potential liabilities and risks, and I'm finalizing the implementation of a safety program to reduce exposure to workplace injury and liability and fortify the city's efforts to protect our employees and the community. I count it an honor and a privilege to serve as your city attorney, and I pledge to expend my very best efforts, time and energy to improving the quality of life for the men, women and children of this community. So I have shared where we've come from and the progress we've made. In March, the COVID-19 pandemic set in. We stayed the course, weathered significant obstacles, and rose to the occasion. Compton United, Compton Strong. With the support of our community residents, leaders, and institutions, we mobilized resources to address our immediate needs. The Compton Food Pantry, funded by the love and generosity of Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine, by COVID, which was Compton's COVID testing pop-up events and permanent testing sites, regular updates through the Compton United Fund and Resource Guide, a partnership with GiveDirect, which represents $1 million of investment directly to Compton residents. We also provided direct support to Compton small businesses made possible by the Giroux Holiday Foundation and also numerous PPE giveaways and partnerships. Uncertain times call for deliberate strategic measures to weather the storm and plan for recovery we worked with a dynamic and committed team to launch the Compton Pledge, a guaranteed income pilot designed to provide $8 million in private, non-taxpayer funded direct cash payments to 800 Compton residents for the next two years and provide direct access to the first in kind Compton Pledge payment and empowerment portal to facilitate the cash transfers and feature services and resources from partners designed to improve participants' financial and mental well-being. The Compton Pledge Initiative focused on addressing systemic disparities and trauma designed for our community with trusted local advisors through a community advisory council. We also partnered with Compton Community Development Corporation, which stepped up to support the Compton Pledge's $8 million guaranteed income initiative. Compton Community Development Corporation has pledged to partner with the city of Compton on the following shared missions. Improve access to capital for small businesses and the community at large lead strategic equitable growth and promote local economic growth and recycling tax dollars and expanding business development and direct wealth creation. Create community wealth building opportunities to share in Compton's growth through promoting the development of and expansion of innovation, tech, arts, culture, affordable housing, targeted workforce, housing, and much more. Most significantly, for the first time ever, 
we are embarking on creating a new creative and tech economy fueled by the power of what makes Compton special, our people's creativity, ingenuity, and resilience. You all asked for us to focus on revitalizing downtown Compton. I listened and our team delivered. We partnered with KBK Development, a premier developer of color that is responsible for over $1 billion in development across the nation to launch Compton's catalytic project that will be a cornerstone for our city's growth and sustainability. We are building an innovation hub with spaces for our artist community and affordable housing. The cornerstone and catalyst of Compton's cultural resurgence will be located in North Downtown Compton at a focal location within the Compton Creative Tech community. We are also building a Compton Virtual Museum highlighting Compton's rich history and influence on the world across every sector of society. These new catalytic vehicles are more evidence of Compton's ability to promote and facilitate public-private partnerships that benefit the residents of Compton and provide real results. We are launching key institutions to develop a new creative and tech economy that harnesses the power and connectivity of all forms of creative arts, tech, media, entertainment, and entrepreneurship, led and fueled by Compton for Compton, in partnership with those that see the potential and power in our city. We've overcome many challenges and obstacles. We fought through deficits, structural challenges, internal and external threats, and focused one day at a time, one result at a time, to rebuild trust and deliver for our residents. While much progress has been made, much remains to be done. The poverty rate in Compton is still 23%, nearly double the national average. During the pandemic, the unemployment rate had risen over 20% and currently resides at 16%. I am proud of the foundation we built. We can rise as always to the occasion. Abigail Lopez Bird is the founder and executive director of Color Compton, a nonprofit in Compton grounded on history and art. She has previously held various professional positions in higher education institutions and community based organizations. As a Compton native, Abigail is passionate about bringing art and opportunities to her hometown. Adriana Orozco has been a proud resident of Compton since 2003. She recently became a community activist by helping to create a block club on her street, now known as the Macmillan Connection. Annabella Bastida is recognized as an effective community leader devoted to advocating for the well-being of immigrant families. She currently works as a director of membership for the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights. Furthermore, she volunteers with Our Lady of Victoria Church in Compton and is also a volunteer with the Red Cross and leads the Compton Preparedness Team that engages, educates, and trains Compton residents about disaster preparedness. Celestina Bishop has worked tirelessly mobilizing volunteers, working with local officials, and investing her own money into restoring dignity to the Woodlawn Cemetery. She has formed a nonprofit called One Section at a Time, which is the perfect description of how she has tackled rehabilitating Woodlawn. Christy McDaniel is the founder of the youth nonprofit Children Striving Together. She's also the founder of The Power Legacy, a for-profit business that assists people with starting their own businesses. Her goal is to leave a legacy behind, but also show individuals that they can do whatever they put their minds to. Christopher Bailey is best known as the Compton activist. Born and raised in Compton, he is a business owner and community activist who has made it his mission to move Compton forward. Chris's mission is to reverse the destruction that he was once a part of and to create a positive narrative for Compton. Compton Veterans, founded by Sherman Watson and Miguel Vasquez, is a tight-knit unit whose mission revolves around improving the quality of life for fellow veterans, their families, and neighbors in the community. Recently, during the COVID pandemic, they began weekly food distributions in partnership with other organizations. Cynthia Nunn opened Sylvia Nunn's Angels, a community resource and youth center. Over the past 12 years, Cynthia and her staff have provided after-school tutoring and mentoring, gang prevention and intervention, holiday events and food giveaways, and have served over 50,000 families. 
Danica Turner Stevens is a mother, wife, and founder of an uplifting organization called Runway for Peace. She created a free program to teach kids how to confidently model and be themselves. She has trained over 1,000 kids and produced Compton's largest fashion show. Dr. Lestine M. Johnson has more than 30 years of progressive business experience as a servant leader. She is currently the president and CEO of the Compton Chamber of Commerce. She has served the chamber for 20 years in various capacities. The Compton Food Pantry is the latest program under the auspice of the chamber. Dr. Michael Fisher uses his influences to affect change in the lives of the congregation he under shepherds, the local greater Los Angeles area, the country, and even abroad. He is in constant pursuit of various means to reach a culture that may not always walk into the church edifice. Dr. Fisher is motivated to change the world through service to God by building a bridge that stretches from the throne of God to the broken lives of mankind. Dr. Sharoni Little is an author, organizational strategist, educator, researcher, global facilitator, and media commentator. As a passionate social advocate, she has partnered with numerous organizations, including the Compton Pledge, the Aspen Institute, Obama Foundation, Kellogg Foundation, and the Children's Defense Fund. Nadine White has proven to be a powerhouse in her neighborhood and community. She views her neighbors as family, and in 2016, she formed the Rose Street Block Club to ensure that they all stayed connected. The Block Club has become a model in our city, and Rose Street hosts large-scale cleanups in the area and beyond. Reverend Rafer Owens is the author of The Seven Pillars of Community Leadership, which is a guide on community relations in law enforcement. Rafer has been a deputy for the Los Angeles County Sheriff Department for over 30 years. He is currently assigned to Compton Station as a community relations deputy. Rafer's focus is to bridge the divide between law enforcement and the community. The Love and Unity Christian Fellowship was founded by Pastor Ronald C. Hill. Since that time, through jail and prison ministries, food, bike, and backpack giveaways, and evangelistic events targeting the Compton community and surrounding areas, the ministry has grown tremendously. The ministry supports various missions such as His Nesting Place, Feed the Children, Christians United for Israel, World Impact, and Prison Fellowship, just to name a few. Veronica Clanton Higgins, TEDx Compton Boulevard organizer, adjunct professor, and certified life coach. She's known for her community advocacy, including addressing the disparities in mental health care for black and brown communities. Her company, VCH Prosperity Consulting LLC, was created to address the social, emotional, and spiritual needs of her community. Yolanda Gomez, founder of Vecinos Unidos por Compton, realized the important need to keep the non-English speaking community informed, involved, and educated on city matters. She is now committed to do her part, continuing her civic engagement and working towards positive change for the city she loves and proudly calls home. Founding members of the Compton Pledge, Jamara Hayner, Nika Soon Chiang, and Michael Steins launched the Guaranteed Income Pilot to provide direct monthly payments to 800 Compton residents for two years. The pilot is carefully designed with our great city in mind and will reflect the diversity of our community, including the undocumented. Compton's greatest asset is our people. And I believe that by investing in building the skills of our community, investing in entrepreneurship, technologists, creative arts, and strengthening our culture through highlighting our history, we can build a new era that includes all of us and provide space for the next generation to thrive. We are now prepared and positioned for a new Compton era, driven by purpose, maintained through peace and unity, focused intentionally on generating shared prosperity for our community. I pledge Compton, Compton United, Compton Strong, 100,000 Strong, Compton Love Forever.